Hi, my name is Jake, and I am a bookish drummer. So for this video, I will be ranking the Stephen King decades. Now, if you've been following my channel for the past few months or even the past year or so, I don't even remember when I started it, but I started going through all of Stephen King's decades and started ranking all of the books within the decades. So I started with the 70s and ranked all of the books that were in the 70s, and then I did the same thing for the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and I even managed to do one for the 2020s. Now, for this video, I will be ranking all of the actual decades. So what is my favorite uh, Stephen King decade and what is my least favorite Stephen King decade? Now, of course, I've already done this video in the past and it's right here and I will link it down below, of course. It's one of my older videos, though, so it's not like very good quality. So I did feel the need to go ahead and update it. And I did just rewatch it now just to like get my overall opinion about my opinions. And I do think for the most part, the, the list hasn't changed very much, but I do have a significant change to the list. So it'll be interesting if you guys have already seen this past video for me to do this video now to get my new opinion, especially now that I've gone back and reread a lot of Stephen King's books for the Stephen King readathon and just the past year in general. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I don't really feel the need to rank the 2020s, so this is just going to be more of like an honorable mention, just because there's only five books, and most of his other decades have a well more than that. So the 2020s has been pretty good so far. Really the only two books that I haven't really enjoyed that much have been Gwendy's Final Task, which is the third Gwendy's book. It's probably my least favorite of the 2020s, not very good not very memorable. And then of course his newest book was Fairy Tale, and the first third of that book was excellent, but then the last half of that book, oh, it was so disappointing. But then the other three books in the 2020s have been excellent. You got Later, Billy Summers, and my personal favorite, If It Bleeds. So kind of a mixed bag, but also just some really fun and excellent Stephen King stories in the 2020s. So now let's start off with probably my least favorite decade, which shouldn't surprise most people. I think a lot of people would choose this as their least favorite, not because all of the books are bad in the decade, but there, there are enough bad books to warrant it being at the bottom of the list. And that would of course be the 2000s. So yeah, the 2000s essentially has a lot of either just bad books or mediocre books or books that didn't live up to the hype. And I'm just looking at the list now like on my laptop here, and you got like Dreamcatcher, which starts out pretty good, but goes nowhere. Black House is the only Stephen King book I haven't managed to finish. Uh, From a Buick 8, it's fine, but not great. Uh, you've obviously, you obviously got some Dark Tower books. Wolves of the Kala is still probably my least favorite of the main Dark Tower novels. Song of Susanna is great though. It's one of the most underrated Dark Tower books. I love it. And then the Dark Tower, Kind of has some anticlimactic moments, but the, the ending to the book is excellent. But still, as a book, not very great. Uh, you've, also got the, you've got The Colorado Kid, which I think is his most underrated book. Excellent, but I know a lot of people hate it. And then you've got Cell, which one of my least favorite uh, Stephen King books. Lisey's Story, not very good. But then you've got Blaze, which is the last Richard Bachman novel. One of my favorite Richard Bachman books. And then you've got Doom a Key, one of my all-time favorite Stephen King books. And then Under the Dome, which the first 900 pages are excellent, and then one of just the worst endings I've ever read. 
And then uh, I think you've got some collections, right? Yeah, everything's eventual. Pretty good, not his best. But then you've got Just After Sunset, probably his most underrated short story collection. It's excellent. And uh, yeah, you've also got On Writing. It's pretty good nonfiction. But yeah, you can kind of tell that the, tw the 2000s is all over the place. Uh, it's, got, it's got some really good stuff, like Doom McKeed, one of my all-time favorites. But then you've got just a slew of either bad or mediocre books. So that's the main reason why it's at the bottom. And then kind of the same deal with the decade that I'm going to rank just above that, which would be the 90s. Uh, again, a, a lot of great books, you know, some of my all-time favorite Stephen King books, but also a lot of bad ones or things that I just think are overrated. So let's go through some of them right now. First of all, you've got The Stand, the uncut version, which came out in 1990. I still think that's probably his most overrated book. I know a lot of people love it. Not a fan, though. But you've got The Wastelands, Dark Tower Book 3, excellent, one of his best. And then you've got Needful Things, one of his best uh, books ever. So kind of starting out the 90s pretty good. You've also got Gerald's Game and Dolores Claiborne, which are very good. Then you start to get a little bad. Uh, Insomnia, I know it has its fans, but I think pretty overrated, more of like a three-star book. Uh, you've got Rose Matter, again, starts out great but just a stupid supernatural element that I think is stupid. <laughs> and then you've got The Green Mile, which is obviously fantastic. Uh, I've got Desperation and The Regulators, both pretty good. You've got Wizard in Glass, a pretty good uh, Dark Tower novel. Then you've got Bag of Bones, which I really need to reread that one because I remember it not being good, but I know it has a lot of fans, so maybe I'm missing something. And then you've got The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon, which is a pretty good one. And then I think you've got a few collections. So Four Past Midnight is my least favorite of the novella collections. It's got two pretty good novellas and then two kind of forgettable ones. Uh, then you've got Nightmares and Dreamscapes, which is still my least favorite short story collection. We've been reading it for the short story book club and there's a few good ones, few really good ones, but for the most part, they're either forgettable or they're boring or they're too damn long. And then you've got Hearts in Atlantis, which the it's kind of a mosaic novel. It's made up of novellas and short stories that are kind of connected towards the end. It starts out really good. The two novellas are great, but the short stories that kind of tail end the book, a little forgettable for me. Uh, but yeah, the, that's the 90s. So you got a lot of like mediocre stuff, but also we're starting to get some really good King stuff. So I do think the 90s is slightly better than the 2000s. <laughs> So after this is when I'm going to start to make a significant change to the list. In my previous video, I did it where the number three spot went to the 2010s, but actually I'm going to give it to the 70s now. The main reason why I'm going to do that is because just looking at it, the number of books is smaller, even though it does have some heavy hitters. Obviously, you've got Carrie, which I would probably put in my top 10, top 15. Stephen King books love it. Salem's Lot is pretty good, maybe slightly overrated. It is one of my favorite vampire novels, even though I'm not a huge fan of vampires. It's still pretty good. You've got The Shining, which obviously is a classic, but the more times I reread it, the less time, or the, the less I enjoy it, and I actually do prefer Doctor Sleep a tiny bit more. And then you've got Rage, which is just one of my least favorite Bachman books, and just overall one of my least favorite Stephen King books. And then you've got the stands, the original version, which I have yet to read. And but I'm I'm just not a huge fan of the uncut version. But I do think the original version I will have a better time with. But I have yet to read that version. And then you've got the long walk, which actually after rereading it, I liked it a little less. I think the first time I read it, I loved it. But the second time, I thought it was pretty good, but not. It, it fell down my ranking of my Bachman books significantly. But then you've also got The Dead Zone, which is my all-time favorite Stephen King book. That's the probably the main reason why it's so high up in the first place is because of The Dead Zone. 
You've also got Night Shift, which is my all-time favorite Stephen King short story collection. Fantastic short story collection. So overall, it does have some duds, but it has some really heavy hitters like The Dead Zone and Night Shift. So that's the main reason why it's this high to begin with. I think last time, though, I was probably leaning towards, you know, like all the Dead Zone, my favorite Stephen King book. I got to put it higher. But for me, the 2010s, which I'm going to put at my number two spot, just it has a lot more to offer, I think. So the 2010s starts out with Full Dark No Stars, which again, probably a top 10, maybe you know, top 15 uh, Stephen King book for me. One of, one of his best novella collections. I love all of the novellas that are in it. You've also got 112263, which I know I say is overrated. It's still good though. I just think the middle section is a bit bloated, but I love the premise and I love the, the main character. Still a good novel. You've got The Dark Tower, Went Through the Keyhole. Not one of my favorite Dark Tower uh, experiences, but it's still not bad. We've got Joyland, which is very underrated. I love that book. We've got Dr. Sleep, which I just said I think I actually like more than The Shining book. You've also got the Mr. Mercedes trilogy, which I know I say End of Watch is not good, and it's not. But Mr. Mercedes is a pretty good thriller, and Finders Keepers is just excellent. You've also got a Revival, which I recently reread that, and that just shot up way high on my list. Probably a top 10 for me now. Uh, I wonder how many times I'm going to say that in this video. Oh, it's top 10. It's top 10. Uh, but yeah, Revival is so good. You've also got Gwendy's Button Box, which I know is kind of tainted with the sequels, uh, Magic Feather and Final Task, but still Button Box has a special place in my heart. Uh, Sleeping Beauties, I did enjoy the first half of that. Second half, not so much. Kind of forgettable, uh, not great. Uh, but then you've got The Outsider, which is fantastic. I do really want to reread that one day. Excellent book. You've also got Elevation, which is one of my least favorites. And The Institute, which is, you know, it's fine. Uh, are there any more collections? Oh, you've also got The Bizarre Bad Dreams, which I know I've said in the past was one of my least favorites, but I am very interested to see if I change my mind on that because I still remember the first time I read it. I think I had read Night Shift be right before that and just jumping into Bizarre Bad Dreams, it was just so different than what his um, Night Shift collection was. Sorry if you can hear rain in the background. It's starting to rain. But yeah, I uh, so that's like all of the 2010s. And even though it does have some books that I really don't like I think it just has much more to offer than the 70s just because the 70s was so limited in the number of books so yeah the 2010s is probably my second favorite decade Which, of course, leads me right into my number one spot, which is obviously still the 80s. And the 80s is really hard to beat, not only because there's not a lot of bad books in the 80s, but just the sheer number of excellent books that are in the 80s. You've got Firestarter. You've got Roadwork, which I know a lot of people don't like, but it's honestly one of my favorite Stephen King books. You got Cujo, excellent. Running Man, pretty good. You've got The Gunslinger, pretty good. Christine, excellent. Pet Cemetery, which I know I just did my rant review for. It's still good and classic. Cycle of the Werewolf is fine. Uh, and then, of course, you got The Talisman, which is my least favorite King book, but can't win it all, right? Eyes of the Dragon is great. Thinner is great. It is great. Drawing of the Three, another top 10 Stephen King book. I love it. Misery, top 10. Oh, but then you got the Tommyknockers. Bad. <laughs> uh, the Dark Half, pretty good. And then, uh, what else do you got? You got Different Seasons, top five Stephen King book. One, probably my favorite novella collection from him. 
And then, of course, you've got Skeleton Crew, one of his best short story... Ugh, excuse me. One of his best short story collections. So, yeah, just the sheer number of good and excellent books that are in the 80s, it's really hard to top that. And also the fact that there's really only two bad books in the 80s. So, yeah, the 80s is still my uh, favorite. So, yeah, do with that what you will. <laughs> So yes, that is how I would rank all the Stephen King decades. And it'll be interesting to see this video like after the 2020s are over, like after like the year 2029, if Stephen King is still writing that far into the future, where the 2020s would lie on this list. Uh, with his trajectory, it's probably not going to be too high because like it's either like really good or just kind of meh, but it'll be interesting. It'll also be interesting to see how my taste changes in the future as I get older. But definitely let me know what you guys think of my list, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. What is your favorite Stephen King decade and what is your least favorite? Or if you just simply want to rank all of them down below, I'd love to chat with you about it in the comments. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and the Bookish Drummer Discord. And if you'd like to go support me financially, go check out my Patreon page, see what that's all about. And I've also got my Amazon wish list if anyone would like to purchase me a book. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a fantastic doodly ass day. <laughs>